This video is to walk you through on how to create a practice note tan. So I start out by doing some practice sketches. I have an X-Acto knife, pencil, glue stick, a six by inch, six inch square, a cutting board, and a nine by 18, uh, or sorry, 12 by 18 piece of paper, paper clip to kind of keep all my things together, and I am ready to begin. So I started out by creating some practice sketches. This is just to give me a reference and kind of start thinking about what it is that I could do for some of my designs. Now you don't have to make these look like anything, but sometimes it gives you a nice direction. You're gonna to wanna to figure out where you are going to put your square on your paper. Do you want it as a diamond like this one is? Do you want it straight across? Kind of look at your designs and think about what that could look like. Um, then take some of those ideas and then I like to draw out just a few ideas just to kind of get a rough idea as to what uh, where to start make sure that when you're drawing these out that you're drawing lightly so then you have the ability to erase them all right also making sure that you're using pencil and not pen because you in your final you don't want to be seeing these so once I have that entire space filled up, I'm gonna go through and kind of start carving some of my favorite or what I think might be the most successful pieces. Uh, sometimes you'll find that your blade might not cut all the way through. And so just be careful and make sure that you are cutting it, not ripping it. That'll help keep it high quality. If you're not using your blade, try and keep your cover on it at all times. And you can see that then basically once you have a piece cut out, you end up just kind of flipping it over. Now I don't wanna leave that blob just one blob. So I wanna make sure that I'm creating some other designs in there to create interest and variety in my project, whether it follows the design like this one, or just sometimes it helps create that texture kind of depending on what your project is. It really kind of helps bring your project to life. And so I like to kind of cut out all those areas and then it, you can kind of see that I will place all of them back together in order to see which way they flip flop because it should be kind of an alternating pattern. All right, so I have this one in place and then I place the next one and then the final one. So I take the very first cut and I flip that over and I just do an exact flip and then I leave the next one and then I kind of end up filling in the space. So if you are lining up the pieces accurately, it kind of allows your eye to see it as one big space, all right? And then you can kind of see I make some changes here. I ended up not liking the pattern that I had created. So I ended up making some changes. If you want, you can try using scissors. I, uh, especially if you have something more detailed, I found it very difficult to use scissors. But if you're not comfortable using an X-Acto knife, you can use scissors. Just really think about the designs that you are using for that. One thing I'd like you to notice is how slowly and carefully that I am working on each of these details. The details is really what makes your project a high quality one and makes it really unique. All right, so make sure that you're working carefully, you're not rushing, you're not ripping your paper, and then therefore you're gonna have better details and a higher quality project. My video is in double time speed, so I'm not actually even working that quickly as this video shows. So. Keep that in mind as you are working on yours. It's not a race to get it done. It's a, you know, how, how high quality can you make this? You can see that I'm doing some smaller details here. Keep in mind that they can get very difficult sometimes to cut out, but I do think that they do end up paying off. So kind of throughout my time of working on my project, I like to kind of flip back and forth and kind of um, make sure that I'm having all my pieces, kind of keep them in order, especially once they're cut out, I always wanna make sure that I'm keeping them in place. So this is what I do to make sure that I'm using all of my pieces. 
You don't throw away any of those small pieces. You need to make sure that you're using every single piece that you cut out. So you also, sometimes it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep some of those smaller pieces until the end. And then I just flip all of them. You can see how I flipped all my pieces and I can kind of see then what my project is looking like in this moment in time, basically. And so then that way I can see like, oh, well, maybe I like this or maybe you want to make some adjustments at that time in order to fill in that space. Once again, I start putting things back together so that I can make sure that that space and the design is looking how I want it to be and kind of test out things to see, you know, sometimes it flips better on one side over the other. So really kind of play around with that layout and make sure that you're getting everything to look good. You can see here that the shapes that I cut out here are not touching either the sides that I'm reflecting on. So I kind of test out to see, do I like it flipping on one side or do I like it flipping on the other side better? And I even, I'll use my fingers, you can kind of see how I did there, um, to make sure that the gaps stay pretty accurate. I don't want to make the gaps bigger or smaller than what they were on the cut out piece. So really try and keep that symmetry accurate. Now I'm sitting at a point where I have basically all that I think that I need cut out of my paper. And so I wanna make sure that my layout looks good. Um, I, so I had put it all out, but then I thought that it looked a little funny on my paper. I didn't think it was very well balanced or using the space on my paper very well. So you can see I put them all back together and then I adjusted it so that when I flip, I think I'm gonna have a little bit more space to work with so it'll look a little bit better. So you can see how once again, I'm practicing the flipping, making sure that that layout looks good, that everything's flipped correctly. And then I'm moving forward from there. So now if you notice, I end up moving my moon over to the other side because I thought it looked better on this side flipped versus the other one. So that's actually where I had kind of swapped it out. Um, but now that I have this all drawn out, I end up not actually liking uh, that, that little extra gap that I just pointed at there. So I decide that I'm going to add some more designs. And so I just keep them, I try and keep them simple, but I want to use in that space. And then I am done for this moment in time. So I take all of my pieces and very carefully, I put them actually in my practice paper. I kind of create a little mini folder and you can see there that I also had made some marks as to where my paper is at. So then that way I don't have to guess as to where it is. So I have the spot where my corners go. Since I had carefully paper clipped all of my pieces together, I have them all still in that little mini makeshift envelope, basically. Um, I take, I start with my square and I find those corners that I had marked off with a pencil. So then that way, once again, I don't have to guess as to where they are. I make sure all my pieces are there, um, get them all in order, and then I kind of put my project back together. So now that it is time to glue, I have all my pieces together. So I like to use the glue stick to kind of pick up those pieces, especially that first cut. I know that the glue needs to be on that side. So I take my practice paper again and use that to glue so I don't make a mess. I make sure it's lined up properly and I flip it over. So I'm leaving that square. I'm not gluing that down, but I need to make sure that my main square is in place so that everything else ends up being in place from there. So you want to make sure that you're working quickly with making sure that everything's adjusted properly, that everything is lined up and everything is glued down flat. 
So you can see I double checked there, it's flipping from there, make sure it's accurate. And I just kind of keep flipping back and forth to make sure that everything gets in place. So I find it easiest to start with that first cut and work my way in towards the details. I think it's just easier to kind of see how the entire picture is going to end up looking from there. So that's just my advice. You'll find that sometimes with these little pieces that sometimes they can be tough to keep accurate, but really do your best to try and keep them as accurate as possible. So like you can see, I have them in place and then I end up using kind of my finger as a guide to make sure that that spacing is correct. And then I make sure that I'm placing it accurately as best as possible. If you noticed, I actually never cut out those pieces that I had added in afterwards. And that was because I wasn't 100% sold on them. And so I waited to make sure that everything else was in place before I decided, yep, I actually want those. So now I am cutting those cut out and then I will glue them in place. And the final thing that I glue down is my main square. And then that way I have that ability to continue cutting out pieces if I feel the need to. If there are ever any pieces that you're not sure on which way to flip them, save them until the end. Glue the ones that you're sure on and you can decide on those later on. And then at the very end, I'm gluing my final square. Really make sure that you're getting glue around the entire thing, but don't use too much. You wanna make sure that it's evenly spread because it really doesn't take a whole lot of glue to get paper to glue to paper. So when you're putting down this main square, make sure that you're aligning it up with those guidelines you gave yourself for the corners. Make sure that your square is lining up with the shapes that you have glued down and that everything is in order. And then try and get off that excess glue and make sure that everything is flat right away. Once you have everything glued down, you wanna make sure that you're taking your eraser, erasing any pencil lines that are showing up on uh, the cut paper and as well as those original guidelines. Those, are, those really do end up taking away from your the quality of your project. So really make sure that you're getting everything cleaned up, kind of getting rid of that excess glue and all that stuff, and then get your name on there and you are good to go. Good luck.